Remember when Sam Altman said the seven trillion dollars he was going to try to raise to build silicon? That was a kind of a cool story for a little while. Well, a lot of people don't realize, or maybe they realize, but the electricity and power was part of what he was talking about when he was talking about that amount of spend and that requirement. And the, the fact of the matter is, is we are rapidly increasing the use of power, electricity, rapidly increasing the demand to get power to create data centers. By the way, this isn't like a you can't just pop up a building and bring a bunch of 15 amp circuits. And, you know, there's a lot of consideration from an engineering standpoint for power. So when you start seeing this massive scale up of all this AI, you're going to be seeing bigger draws. You know, we've talked about power requirements and, you know, worldwide going from one to 2% since AI. I don't know if that's been hundred percent validated yet, but that's one of the claims you've seen in countries like Ireland, double huge amounts of expanded use where there's all these um, data centers. And, you know, eventually we're going to have the challenge of where do we create enough energy? You know, not going to come from solar farms, probably not going to come from windmills. You know, we've got challenges to figure this out. And so there's two ways to solve the problem. One is we need to figure out how to create more clean, ideally clean energy, um, clean in different ways. That doesn't mean just solar and wind, that could be nuclear. But we need to create the, the power. And then on top of that, we need to try to find efficiency. So when you hear companies making claims about chips, generally the claims are focused on two things. They focus on the performance and they focus on the the, the uh, efficiency or the power. And so Renee uh, Haas from uh, ARM came out and talked about how its CPUs, its ARM-based, uh, can save 15% versus others. And so, you know, this brought a lot of question about, you know, uh, as we create more efficiency, does that necessarily create more volume? And does it, you know, what's the impact on that? And is this a real number? Uh, are the newest x86 versions really this much less efficient? We always know ARM has had a big focus on more efficient designs. Um, but Pat, I mean, in the end, the question is, is if power is the rate limiting resource, does 15% better if that claim could be validated by Signal 65 or by Signal 65 or possibly by another firm that validates claims. Uh, and by the way, some of these numbers have been proven over the time. Like there's been, these comparisons have been done. But if you could save that power, does that make a material difference? And does that tilt the uh, scales more and more in favor of ARM, which has already seen the scales tilted more in its favor over the past several years? I think if that becomes the sort of understanding of AI as highly tied to um, ARM-based or ARM-paired you know, paired designs. Um, Pat, this could be pretty compelling. I said 15% efficiency could look like 150% in terms of interest because companies are trying to solve the two things, more performant, more efficient. Um, it's very provocative, uh, but we know that the amount of demand, amount of use is going to keep going up. So I don't know. It's, it, it, it's probably more of a proclamation at this moment, but this is going to be one of the most important uh, topics beyond you know new process for more powerful designs is also more less power hungry more powerful design yeah uh my apologies if you had mentioned this already but this is a blog from arm ceo uh renee haas yep uh i did i did i did pick at this listen i'm a facts and details guy and measures of merit i have a a deep uh deep-seated uh, joy in my heart. I'm a product person at heart, product marketing person uh, second. And, you know, digging into the claims. Now, like Dan said, we didn't do the research on this. Uh, uh, and, and Signal 65 didn't do the testing and validation of it. But I, I did ask the company where they got their figures from and what their methodology was. They didn't send me a spreadsheet, which uh, which which would have been nice, and they didn't send me uh, the sources of it. But when they walked me through kind of how they did that, it really started off with kind of tops down. What's the total power consumption of a, a set of hyperscaler data centers? And by the way, that is uh, public uh, data that a lot of these companies uh, issue with their ESG, ESG reports and also in, in industry uh, conferences. And then taking the approximate percent 
of that power attributable to the compute, right? And if you can imagine a rack, right? You have compute, you have storage, you have some sort of networking, and then you have networking that uh, 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 connects the trays. You have networking that connects the racks and then that turn into a fleet. And then you have networking that uh, connects those fleets and then you have to cool the whole thing. So, um, and then they uh, approximated an efficiency factor for ARM versus x86 efficiency. And they took that from their partners measured claims, right? Up to 50% uh, uh, savings. And then they applied it uh, to the difference from ARM's market share to a target market where it would be broad adoption of ARM. And I don't know if that's 100% uh, of it, but you know, clearly this wasn't just thrown out there. And when the CEO says something, uh, Renee is a very facts and details guy. I've known him forever. Um, this is what they, they, they come up with. And, and essentially, right, there's two ways you can play this. I like to call it power sloshing, which says if you, lo you, you lose less uh, power in compute, CPU compute, you can slosh that power over to a GPU, by the way, or storage. Uh, and then it's power and you need to recognize the the cooling that 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 you might have to put against that. The other way to look at it that says, hey, if all of your CPU compute were were ARM, you could reduce the power power footprint by 15 percent. So there's two ways you can play that more GPU by savings or networking and storage power and cooling or reducing your power footprint in there. And by the way, in today's wackadoodle days uh, of, of GPU compute, my guess is that most of these folks take it to GPU. By the way, not just GPU, but accelerator, right? Uh, whether, you know, I don't wanna be uh, uh, biased here, but anyways, probably said more detail than, uh, than people were looking for, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to get, get that out there. Big topic, Pat. Look, I mean, we love talking about what's next and, you know, how much more powerful and bigger models and, you know, but some of this, like we are, the the infinite power required to create this, uh, a, you know, this, what do they call it? The AGI, yeah, uh, the future and AI. And uh, it's not, it's not negligible. It's pretty substantial. And so solving this problem is going to be important. 